What we're told today is daf is daf mem aleph in Ksubis. We learn for a poor shleimer for Yosef Israel ben Chai Michal and Elazar ben Reuma. From the top of the page, I'm going to be titi at at Bito Shaplani. What's going on over here? We're talking here. This parak is about kenas for ones or for uh, for pitui. What does that mean? Either for raping or for seducing a girl. The laws are slightly different. The amount is still the same, 50 shekels that you pay to the father. <clears throat> and both of them are knasot. Knasot means that they're fines. They're statutory fines that are either a fixed amount of money, as in this case, or a, a multiple of the principal that you owe. So what do we mean here? We're talking here today's off about the difference between, this is a throwback, sort of speak to Baba Kama, that there's a difference between paying the principal of what you owe. I tore your shirt. I got to pay for your shirt. The shirt costs uh, whatever it costs, 19 shekels, 99 shekels, whatever it costs, I got to pay them. There's also a thing called knas, where there's a penalty where I'm not paying for the principal of the damage that I do. For example, when I burgled your shirt in the middle of the night, so not only do I have to pay the 99 shekels that it costs, but I got to pay double. Kefo, we all know that. Right? If you burgled something, you have to pay double. If you stole and, and uh, sold or shechted an animal, like a shore or a kevis, you got to pay dollar behay. That's all fine. So whenever you don't pay the actual principal, you pay something more, or as, as we'll see, even something less. You don't pay the actual principal. That's called a knas. What's well, seen a knas? What's the difference if it's a statutory fine and how much it is? whether it's a fixed amount of money or a multiple versus just paying the principal. This, the main difference we're gonna talk about today is if you're moda without going to court. The court was not mechaibi. When you, when you took the case to court, they, the, you, know, you damaged somebody, they took you to court and they, they gave you the fine of double or whatever. Uh, so you have to pay it. But let's say you were moda on your own there's a claw, Motiba Knas Pati. You probably remember that from the first learnings that we did when we were kids. Motiba Knas Pati. The Pusik says, Asher that if the court, a proper court, uh, Elohim means here a court, a Bezin court uh, with the uh, rabbis who were Musmachim in Eretz Israel. So the, if, if, you were, if you were judged guilty by a court, then you have to pay the double or the four, the five, or the fixed amount of money, the 50 shekels or the 30 shekels. If you're sure killed a, a uh, an Ebed, an Ebed Kanani, you got to pay 30 shekels, even though there's Ebed might be worth one shekel or two shekels or 100 shekels, you can pay 30 shekels. Those are all Knassas that a court can be Mechaibi, but let's say you're mowed on your own. You came and you said, you know, I did this. Let's say I say, you know what, I had Harat, I did Shuba the next morning. I want to return your shirt. I stole your shirt. I burgled it in the middle of the night and I would have to pay it, but I mowed it that I did it. You didn't take me to court. You didn't prosecute me or sue me, I mowed on my own. I don't have to pay the cable. I only pay the principal. That's the general rule here. So now a person comes along and says, says the Mishnah Omer, pititi et bito shaploni. You know what? I seduced a little girl. There's a 12 year old girl, nine at Anara, and I seduced her. She doesn't say anything. I'm coming, I'm from saying, I'm a pititi et bito shaploni. Michelle and Boshes of Gam Gosma, we learned the other day, the past few days, that besides the knas that a rapist or a seducer pays, he also pays for the shame and for her devaluation. The gam, the nezek, pays for that too. If there's sar, in the case of uh, ones, there's sar also. If there would be ripui and uh, shebas, it'd be there too. But uh, we don't talk about that. Presumably in the case, those cases, there is no ripui and shebas. But in any case, we say over here that if he comes along and says, I motive, you know what? I want to admit the truth. I seduced this young girl. And um, I slept with her. So he has to pay the Bosh of Gam. Of course, he pays it to the father, as we've talked about, and we'll see more. Al Piazmo, Vainamisham Kaspers pay the Knas, because a Knas, the, the 50 shekels is a Knas. And we just explained mode of a Knas is Potter. What about the Bosh of Gam? That's not a Knas. That's money. That's money. I damaged you. I took off your toe. I ruined your car. I I, uh, I hit you and you had to pay for uh, damage, you know, you had to pay to get fixed or to get uh, get repaired for medicine or whatever it was. In this case, we're talking about devaluation and boshes. That's real money. That's not a knas. That's not a penalty that the Torah imposed upon you, which has no bearing on the principle and the amount of the damages. Boshes is is, is, is is real damages so that you have to pay. It's like a guy comes along and says, you know what? This happens in Israel all the time. Um, by mistake, I dented your car. You weren't there, but I left a note. Right? 
Don't they always do that? They leave a note when they, when they hit your car, right? So I damaged your car, so I got to pay for it. I admit it. You know, they say, well, oh, you're a nice guy. You're a good Samaritan. You're, you're a nice guy. You admit it. You don't have to pay. What do you mean? I, I did the damage, right? So the, in a case like that, that's supposed to come. So, but the knas, you don't have to pay because motor knas is bought. Similarly, owner ganapti, this theory you get to the other cases, not just including the, uh, the cases of rape and seduction. Omer Ganafti, a man says, I burgled, burgled your shirt, let's say. Mishal Masekar, I pay for the shirt. Then Mishal, I don't have to pay the kefal, motor knas is bought. So I only pay the principal, not the second part. The kefal, the double, the second portion that I pay, that's a knas, motor knas is bought. Similarly, Tashlumi Avra Chamisha, you don't pay the Avra Chamisha. If there's no kefal, there's also not tashlum because we've learned many times it's only and once you take away the kefal, there's no doubt. Dal the hay is including the kefal. So there's that's a kanas, you don't have to pay that. Hey, Mashori is plony. Let's say my shore killed a person, a regular person, a Ben Khomer Jew, killed a Jew. Oh, shore is plony, or he killed somebody else down the shore. You got to pay for the damages. In the case of shore, you got to replace the shore. You got to pay for a new shore. If you killed a person, and he was a muid, we'll see. Then he pays what's called kofar. He pays the person's value on the market, what, what it's worth on, on, the, on the market. You have to pay for that. So in this case, we're talking about money. We're not talking about a knas. Hamas shori is ploni. O shori shal ploni. Areza m'sham pats, but you pay, even though you admitted it on your own, but that's not a knas. That's like saying, I damaged your car. Hamas shori abdo shal ploni. Let's say my shore killed that guy's evid knani, where the Torah gives a statutory fine of 30 shekels. You kill an Evid, I don't care if they have a Kanani as we had yesterday, whether he is a diamond cutter or whether he's a tailor, it makes no difference. Whatever he's worth, you pay 30 shekels. That's a Kanas. Hey, Mishori, Abdul Shoponi, Aina Misham Pass doesn't pay by his own admission because that's a Kanas. Motor Kanas is about Zach Hall. Here's the general rule. Call him Mishalim. Whenever it says Zach Hall, you got to be careful, right? It includes more, but we'll see. Zach Hall, call him Misham Yesra Amash Yizik. When you pay for more than you damaged, as the Torah gave you a statutory fine, in a Misham Pasva, you don't pay if you admit it on your own. The assumption over here is that, you know, you pay for the, when the case of a rape, Nezik Sari Peshev Saboshes, but that doesn't include, the Kanas is extra. It's more, you're paying besides Nezik Sari Peshev Saboshes, you're also paying for the, the 50 shekels that the Torah fined you. In the case of Evid, even though he might be worth one shekel, you pay 30 shekels. So, of course, the Lashon of Kol Misham Yeser Amashe Hizik, if you pay more than you damaged, you don't pay Alpiyas because that's a Kanas. What happens if it's less? I said before, what happens if the Evid Kanani is worth 100 shekels or 1,000 shekels? You only pay 30 shekels. There you're paying less. It's still motive of is potter. So tomorrow we'll talk about why you use that lotion. But the truth is, it's whenever you don't pay the exact value of what you damage. You're not paying the principal for whatever reason. You damaged $500. I did $500 worth of damage to your car. But I... Uh, uh, I don't pay the 500, I'm paying some other amount, then it's obviously a knas, and then motor knas is part. Okay, so the Gemara says, why talk about Omer Pititi at Bito Shoplani? Why talk about, I seduced this girl, you know, okay, so I have to pay for damages, Boshes and Gam, and that's exactly for Shevis and Boshes, there is no Tsar, only no Reaper, no Shevis, but there is Boshes and Gam, so I pay, what about, what about raping? What happens if he says, I, he did, he's not talking about seduction, he's talking about raping, I raped the girl. What if he says, if a listener a Nasi, why does he say, why give the case of Peter? We're talking here in this parak about, about uh, Ones. Why not talk about Peter? Why not? Talk, so why do, only, why do you only mention Peter? Talk about us. But let's say a Nasi, say I raped her. Slummy boy comer. He's telling you a bigger fish. Slummy boy, a Nasi, Dilo Kapogum law. Certainly when he says a Nasi, what's a bigger shame to the girl and her family? A seduction or a rape? Hmm? Seduction is worse because that means she had, she she was part of it. She was raped. It was against her will. If she was seduced, it means she went willingly. That's that's a bigger shame to the family. So he says, "Love me, boy, a nasty." Certainly, as la that he's not tarnishing her reputation. The mashal and boshes of gam. Certainly, over there, where where he's not tarnishing, it certainly have to pay boshes of gam. He raped her, right? Al piasma. Certainly, still you don't pay the knas because uh, not knas is butter. But what about the word the Kiddush of the mission is that but we know about the Kassas Pata, we learn Baba Kama. But how do we know Misham Bashri? I'm the Khadish is that that's money, that's not that's principle, that's damages. So certainly over there he pays Rosh Sagam, right? Because he hasn't tarnished her. Ava Pititi. But when he says I, I seduced her to Kapogamla, there he's tarnished her reputation. Aimalomasham Piatsma, why? Why? Because I might think that you're gonna tarnish your reputation. The guy comes along and just says that. Maybe just saying that. To ruin her reputation. 
right? If he says, if he has, he has a choice of saying two things, like a liar comes along, he wants to ruin the family. He wants to say that the, whatever, the Freedmans or whatever the name is, or there, you see what, uh, what a bunch of low lowlifes they are. Is he better off saying I rape their daughter or I seduce her? Well, if he wants to ruin the reputation, he'll say I seduced her. She went willingly, right? She wanted to do it. So you might say over there, he's not believed at all. Don't pay the Bosch of gum because he's just not making up a story. How do you know? Was there a police investigation? Was there a rape kit? What was it? You know, what, what, what was there? So you might say he's not believed. Maybe he's not believed to say, oh, you know what? I seduced that girl. What? They come from such a rabbinish family and you're going to ruin the reputation? Don't believe this guy. He's coming on. He's telling a story. We shouldn't pay al piyatsma at all because he's ruining your reputation. Right? They're going to say something. Why, why should you believe him? Kamash we still believe him. Says, says the Gemara, Namasi. Yeah. Why, why yeah. Do you say or not? Oh, okay. Because he just no, tells you one case. No, you don't tell you extra. The Gemara would ask, why did he go? The answer okay, so the answer is the answer is right. The answer is that's understood. That's understood. You don't say more. Rebbe did not say more than necessary. He says that's obvious. Anasti is obvious. If you believe him on Pititi, you certainly believe him on Nasti. Masis lo kaitana. The mission does not agree with the Falantana because the Falantana says Anachanami that you wouldn't believe him. The time you're Shimon and Yudam, Shimon of Shimon says never Shimon. Afos gam enim Shem Tehasma. You don't pay Bosh in the case of Pititi. Why local imenu shiv kam bitol shaponi? He's not believed. He does. He's not empowered. To tarnish your reputation and the family. What happens if she doesn't mind? She likes to have a reputation that she's a promiscuous girl, and maybe other people will take her out on dates too. What happens if she says, according to Shimon, who says he's that if a guy comes along and says, I seduce this girl, he doesn't have to pay anything because we don't believe him. He's not believed to do that. So if Papa said to buy, what happens if she doesn't mind? She says, yeah, you know, I'm, 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 maybe her father is not happy with it. In other words, you're not just ruining her reputation. You're ruining the reputation of the, of the whole Friedman family. I hope there's nobody here but by the name of Friedman, just using it as an example. All right. Maybe her father's not happy. So what happens if her father doesn't mind? He'd rather get the money. In other words, what do you mean he's not happy that his daughter was seduced, but he'd rather get the money. Right, he'd rather get the money. He'll, he'll live with the reputation. Right? So don't want to live in Amish The other family members. It said when when something like that happens, it happens to the family. They don't just look at the girl and say, like, "What kind of what kind of a girl did that family raise?" What happens if the family doesn't mind? They'd rather get the money. Right? Everybody's got relatives. It's like somebody tells you that you know, uh, oh, my family is all religious. You know, they're all yeah. He doesn't know his fourth cousin in uh, Santa Fe. You know. Uh, everybody's got everybody's got family somewhere. You have to like a It's sort of Shimon Holt disagrees with our mission. Our mission says you believe because it's money. Both of you got to pay. You admitted you did damage, sure. You got to pay. But Shimon says, no, no, no. You just can't come along and say it. Even if she says, says you don't you don't necessarily believe him. If there's eight him, fine. Well, if there's eight him, you wouldn't have to pay the knas anyway if, it, if there's eight him on the whole thing. But if he just comes along and misses, let's say she she's claiming the money from him. If she's claiming the money or the family's claiming the money. He didn't come along and say it on his own. Family's claiming the money. He said, look, you were you seduced the girl, then you'd have a, 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 a proper case. And, and if they if they made the claim, presumably, then you don't look at the fact uh, of uh, what Rabbi Shimon says about, you know, other family, there's somebody in the family who's not happy about it. Um, and then you would make the claim and collect the money. Home again after Shamas again. So now we go back to Baba Kama. Man says, I stole something, I burgled something. You pay the Karen because the principal you have to pay no matter what. I damaged your car. Um, it's like I stole your car. I burgled your car in the middle of the night and I damaged it, right? I burgled it. So um, if I admitted that I burgled it, forget about the damage. I admitted that I burgled it. I got to give you back the car or pay the value of the car if I if I wrecked it, uh, but I don't pay the cable. Idmar, Palganiska, this is a famous case we have in Babakama. When you pay Chatzinezik, the rule is, remember, there's a, there's a Shor, Bor, Mavra, and Hever, talk about Karen and talk about Regal and Shane. Animals normally walk in the street. And when they walk in the street, they do damage. That's called regal. Animals normally, they walk in the street, in the public street, and if there's food, they're going to eat it up. So they're putter from paying shame for regal, if you remember, right? Because in the middle of the street, because that's what they normally do. What are you leaving your stuff in the middle of the street for? You left your jars in the middle of the street and the animals trampled on them. That's your tough luck, right? That's your, your, your you shouldn't have done that. So they're high, they're putter, uh, and if your animal uh, trampled on something or ate some food in the street, Potter. However, if he did it in somebody else's yard in a private property, he's chayev. Okay. Then there's another thing called karen. Animals don't normally uh, regular ox that maybe doesn't normally gore. 
Does he gore? Well, if he gored the first, second, or third time, he pays what? Chatzinezek, right? Learn in the Torah that you split, you split it, and therefore he pays half of what he damaged. If he's a mu'e, damaged three times already, then you pay the full amount, right? That's the, so that when he pays the half, the half amount. The Gemara now has this famous machlokas. Itmar, Palganiska, when you pay the half, Chatzinezek, that you pay for Karen, not for, not for Shane Varego, but when you pay for Karen, an animal, an animal shouldn't do that. And even in the middle of the street, if he damaged, if he gored another animal, if it damaged, he only pays for half. So the, the question is, is that half a knas or is it a discount? He really owes the whole amount. He killed a, this short uh, gourd, a little goat or something like that. He really should pay. But the first, you know what, the first couple of times we give him a hanacha, a discount. So that's the question. It Mark, Palganiska, when you pay half chatzinesik or papa or palganiska, mona, it's principle. That's regular what you call civil damages. You you hurts you 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 kill the uh, goat. You got to pay for it, right? You got to pay for it. Oh, so so why do you own, why don't you pay the whole amount? We'll explain it in a minute. No, it's a knas. You shouldn't pay anything. You shouldn't pay. Any, you don't owe him anything because the animal doesn't normally do that. Okay, so so the first couple, the first few times we say, you know what? Uh, pay fifty pay fifty percent. What's the swar here? Animals aren't safe. I don't care what kind of animals. Even if you like your animal, you have a nice shore called Norman over there, and you like that animal. You know, it might be nice to you, but uh, you know, it's like people who walk their dog. Oh, he never, never bites. Ah, you know, he bites you all of a sudden. You know, my animal doesn't do any damage. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. So he says, normal oxen, they're not considered safe. You know, they could do damage. Right. Well, we did it with Kulay. So if my if if your if your ox came along and gored my goat and killed him, you should really pay for the whole thing. But Rahman of Hashem said that the highest Allah, I have Rahman said in the Kati Loya because he hasn't been warned. He hasn't become a Mu'e. Mu'e means he's been forewarned already three times. And who have the if you warned him three times, then he's considered a Mu'e. But lacking that, so the Torah says, you know, really you should pay for the whole thing, but we'll give you a break. And you should have guarded your animal, but you know, the first couple of times. He hasn't been warned, so we'll give you a break and you only have to pay half. But you really owe the money. Now, what's, of course, the nafkamina? If it's, if it's money or if it's kanas, motive of kanas is part If a man comes along and says, my shore, you, find, you know, your goat, you found your goat dead, dead in the street. It was my shore who did it. So if, if it was motive, if, if the kanas, the 50% that I pay is a kanas, I really shouldn't have to pay anything. Shouldn't have to pay anything. Like Rafuna says, Rafuna says, it's a palgan, it's a good, it's a kanas. So most animals are safe. Most oxen aren't going to go around goring. But we didn't I shouldn't pay anything at all. Well, he gored him. That wasn't that was out of the ordinary. I shouldn't have to pay for that. Rahman of the Hashem said, you know what? You're right. You shouldn't have to pay, but we're going to make you pay 50%. You should guard him. You should guard him extra. So the question is, is an animal normally safe or not? The first year, Republic says the animal is not safe. You should have guarded him. You should pay for the whole thing. But we gave you a break of Hanukkah the first couple of times. The the um, the the other sheet of Ravuna says no. The animal is considered safe, and Stamiyam is considered safe. Except you know what? Once he started goring, we're going to make you pay half as a knas. So you should make an extra. You should guard, guard it more. Obviously, the difference would be: is it with your motor to it? If your motor on your own, if it's a knas, motor knas is potter. If it's mamun, you have to pay. It's like I damaged your car. Okay. So so, this is different the case because the Mishnah, even though it's, even if your whole motor is to go by the transport, you're still paying something. Right. Here, you're not paying anything. No, you are. Why? What are you paying? You're by paying. the shore. By the shore, you're paying. You're half. Going to, that's Either way. Right, right. Oh, no. So what are, and your motor. Right. Oh, oh, so you don't so pay you're, anything. You're, right. you're scot-free. Right, right. Whereas so, yeah. Mishnah, you're you're, you're from the payment. Right. right. Correct. Correct. You're part of the Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. So, well, no, it would be the same in the Mishnah. Let's say um, uh, my my shore, uh, my shore killed his ebbet, ebbet kanani. So you don't pay anything. It caused him damage. No, no, no. Caused, caused it, I, I caused damage. the animal's death. The guy's dead. The kanani's He's dead. dead. Right. So if you say motor kanas is you don't pay anything. You don't pay even the, even, even the third. You don't pay anything. No, you don't pay anything. Element. No, there's no other element. That's it. There's thirty shekels. That's it. You don't pay anything. You don't pay anything. If he's, we'll see if he's, uh, if he's, if if he, if he, right. You don't that's pay anything in that case. case. Right. Now, uh, there's no kofar. Kofar is only for a ben chorin, not for not for an evan. Now, so the Gemara goes on to explain it. So we're going to try to prove now this question. What is the halachas? Motor kanas is potter. 
is, is not Mordechai. Mordechai is always Mordechai is always Mordechai. But is Chatzin Esek a Knas or is it Momen? We're going to see later on that Chatzin is that Chatzin Esek is a Knas. But the Gemara is going to try to prove that it's Momen. All the proofs are going to be that it's Momen. The Gemara is like this. It's not. And when it comes to, let's say, one animal gourd, another animal, they both participate in the payment. They both participate in the payment. What do you mean? Your shore killed my goat and I'm participating in the payment. Yeah, by contributing half, by 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 giving the other guy half, I'm contributing. Okay, so I have to pay half too. It's my animal, but by not being reimbursed for the whole amount, I'm paying half. But if he says a knas, if it's a knas, that means I'm not entitled to anything, right? A knas means that you know the first couple of times I'm I'm uh, he doesn't have to pay me anything. Except they go tell you my class, but nothing. I don't. I'm not owed anything. So hashda love the day. But what am I getting? I'm getting fifty. I'm getting fifty percent as a knas that the Torah said he has to pay me. So if I'm taking something which is not even mine, I'm not entitled to anything. I'm getting. But the shlomi how could you to call me being? I'm also involved in the payment. <laughs> There's no payment over here. I'm getting something which I don't even belong. It doesn't even belong to me. The Torah is giving me a knas. So how does that make sense? So hard to prove that chazi nezik is mama. So you must low. And therefore, motive, motive, if you'd be motive to that, you'd be chayef to pay. This is low. We're not talking about that. Anizik is not talking about the payment for the animal. The truth is that the payment for the animal could be a knas. He doesn't owe me anything. When he says with tashlumim, he means this, lepchas nevela. Here's the deal. When, the, when his shore, let's say, killed my goat, killed my goat, right? So... And his shore, this is the first time, first or second, third time that he damaged. He didn't become a mu. He wasn't worn three times. He didn't become a mu again. And he only owes me half. Okay, he owes me half for the knas. But when, when you figure out what is the amount, how do you figure it out? You say, what was the gold worth when it was alive? And what was it worth when it was dead? When it was alive, it was worth 100 shekels, let's say. When it's dead, it's worth 10 shekels. It's dead. It's just a carcass. You could just sell it for the sell to the guy for nevela meat or whatever. Now... Though that by the time they came to, by the time the Nizik, by the time the one who lost his goat, by the time he took it to court and everything, over the time he sold the animal off to the Goyim for Nevela, it was worth less. It was only worth two shekels now. It went down from 10 to two. The end, it was a little bit decayed or whatever. So there, that, that the Nizik has to absorb the whole amount. That's what it means over here. The, we're talking about the Pchat Nevela, the depreciation. Pchat is depreciation, the Pchat of the, of the dead animal after it was killed. I only, the mazik only has to pay, let's say it's a mu'e, he has to pay the whole amount. The mazik has to pay what he damaged. The, ma, your, the shore, the mazik shore killed the nizik's uh, goat, let's say. So what does he have to pay? The goat's worth 100 shekels. Well, it's worth 10 shekels dead too. The meat, the hide is worth something, right? So he has to pay 90 shekels. Fine, that's all he has to pay. If he pays half, he pays 45. But the, de- but the loss that the nizik absorbs because when it died, it was worth 10 shekels. By the time he, he was able to sell it on the market or find somebody to buy the high, went down to two shekels, that he has to absorb. That's what he means. The Gemara says, what do you mean? We already learned another price there. says, Tanina, Tashlumi Nezik, Malamisha, Balam, and Tapam, and Avela. The owner of the animal, the Nezik, he has to take care of the Avela. So we already learned it. So what do you mean? He's telling you Nezik, but Mazik, Tashlum is talking about Pachat, the Avela. And if you're talking about Tashlum, then it's a proof that Chatsi Nezik is Mama. We're saying, no, Chatsi Nezik is Knas. And, and this is what we say, Nizik, but Mas Bishlum, and talking about the Pachat Nevel. Pachat Nevel was already learned. The answer is Chad Betam, Chad Mu'i. Whether it's a, a, a Tam who only pays half or a Mu'i that pays the full amount, still the owner of the animal, the goat, the owner of the goat, he has to absorb the loss of the, the Pachat Nevel. But Shrikh, what I have to tell me both, Vyash Min and Tam, Bishum Dekatila, because he's not a Mu'i yet. So you say over there, why should the Masik have to pay? The animal is not a Mu'i. So the Nizik has to pay for the Pachat Nevel. Aval Mu'i, the Ayat, but a Mu'i, where the animal's already, the mazik knows he's got a damaging animal, he's got a dangerous animal on his hands, maybe he should have to pay for the Pachat Nevei. And below, Kamash Mulan, that a muid also, yes, mean a muid mishum the Kamashal and Kulei. Since the muid pays for the whole amount, the whole 90 shekels, he say, Lachar, that's enough. Pay the 90, let the nizik absorb the Pachat Nevei. Abel Tam, maybe below. Tam, when the mazik's only paying half anyway, maybe he should also absorb the cost of the Pachat Nevei. It's really a bit on both cases. So that's one case we tried to prove Chatsi Nezik is Momo. And we said it's not a proof. Tashma, here's another proof. Mabain Tam Lemoy. Again, the Gemara Mabkan. So let's see the Tam Lemoy. A Tam Mashalid Chatzinezik Migufo, by the way. Pays from the, let's say the Mazik's animal was a cancerous, half dead animal that was worth nothing. 
and and um, and when he pays half chatzinezek, it's not even his the body the animal is not even worth the chatzinezek. He damaged an animal that's worth hundred shekels, and this whole animal is only worth ten or twenty shekels. And it, right, he was on the the damages would be he killed an animal's worth hundred shekels. Let's say not including the pot, it's worth ninety shekels. He damaged he did ninety shekels of damage, and you have to pay half. Half would be forty-five. But the animal, the mazik's animal, is only worth twenty shekels. All right, so that's too bad. So that's number one. That one difference is that a tom pays half nezik from the goof of his animal. Umud misham nezik sham and alia. A muid pays the whole amount of all the mazik's assets. You don't look at what the animal, the mazik animal, what he's worth. No, he has to, he, owes, he owes the full amount, the whole ninety shekels from his assets. That's the difference between a tom and a muid. Why don't you say here's another one? Why don't you say this difference? If Chatzin Nezik would be Knas, say that a Tom doesn't pay Alpiasmo. If the owner of the, the Masik admits that my animal gored your animal, uh, gored your animal and killed him or whatever, he doesn't have to pay because it's Chatzin because it murdered the Knas's potter. If Chatz, why don't you say here's another one between Tom and Mui? Tom is a Knas. And therefore, if I mowed it to it on my own, I don't have to pay. And Mui, you pay even pay asthma because that's that's your paying principle. So, and and since he doesn't give that difference, shows you the motor that shows you that the chatzin ethic is not a knas, but it's rather money. And therefore, there's no difference whether it's uh, you admit it on your own or didn't admit it on your own. Both cases, it's money, whether it's Tom or Mui. The Mars is ton of a shy. You're right, that is a difference, but he didn't give all the differences over here. But he gave one difference: the Tom, the Tom pays half nesik from the goof of the animal, and the Mui pays a full amount. From the all the all the Masik's assets, right? So he gave that one example, but there's other examples. Tanavashai left out the Mashai Dasha. What else did he leave out? Chatsi Kofer. We mentioned before in the mission, if my animal killed that person and he's a Muid, he has to pay Kofer, he has to pay the value of the person, what that person's worth on the market. That's Chatsi Kofer. What about if he's a Mu, uh, he's a Tom, he hasn't gored yet three times, and therefore he's a Tom, does he have to pay Chatsi Kofer? He's a he's a child, Chatsi Kofer. Why? He left the Chatsi Kofer. Why? Because the Tan doesn't pay Chatsi Kofer. It doesn't pay Kofer. There's no such thing as Chatsi Kofer according to this Tan. Try a Chatsi Kofer. So he says, uh, and, and therefore there's another difference, that the Mu'e pays Kofer and the Tan doesn't pay Kofer. That's what he wants to say. So there's another difference that left out. The Gemara says no. Uh, why? Because how uh, money, they can go like a Vyosei Glili, Domer Tam and Sham Chatsi Kofer. He says, he does pay Chatsi Kofer. So if he, say, if he pays Chatsi Kofer, that's just really like the same as the first part. What's in the saying that Tom and Amui, Tom pays half from the goof of the mass of, of the animal itself, and Amui pays the full amount. Okay, there's another thing that one pays half kofer and one pays the full. It's the same thing the chad, that the Tom pays half and the Muid pays the whole amount. So therefore, there's no ton of a shire you're saying over here. And therefore, the Chora, it is a proof. You could say, you could say that it is a proof from this Mishnah or from this Brisa, Ma Ben Tom Lemuid, it's a Mishnah, I think. Muslims did that one pays chatzin ezek, migufa one pays, and the muay pays, and that's called me'aliyah. And he doesn't mention al piyatsmo or not, indicating that you do pay al piyatsmo either way, and that chatzin ezek is mamon, the chorid's approved, unless you say ton of a shire. Okay, but it's not ton of a shire if you hold go like a bell siak lily, but it depends if you go like this. So the proof is not strong either way. Tashma, another proof, right? The second line, on and base. Tashma, another proof. We're going to prove again. The proofs we're all trying to prove that chatzin ezek is mamon. Even though the psak is chatzin ezek is knas, tash mahemis shori is pony. My shore killed that guy. O shor shor or his shore. Now over there, raising misham piyatsma. Our is our mishnah. That's why it's brought down over here. This whole proof of chatzin ezek mamon or knas, the gemara baba kama, is brought down here because of our mishnah. Our mishnah says you pay because that's principle. My shore killed that guy. I have to pay his value. It's not a knas. It's not a fixed amount uh, or a set amount or or a multiple, but rather. It's to pay what his value was, or I killed his shore. I got to pay off the asmo. My love, the Tom. Are we not speaking about a Tom and we're paying half the amount in the case of the shore? I'm paying it, kills shore. I'm paying half the amount, and you have to pay indicating that Chatzin is mamon. There's love. We're talking about a muay. We're not talking about a Tom here at all. Some proof from our mission. We're talking about a muay where he pays full amount, principle normal. Abba Tom, my Amisham Piyatsma, but by a Tom he doesn't. So Adatani Sefer, why talk about the Sefer? Abdo Shaploni, if my shore killed this person, or his shore, I pay the full amount. But if he killed the Evid Knani, Ada Misham Piyatsma, he only pays the 30 shekels gas Knas. Why talk about it if my shore killed a person versus killed the Evid Knani? Niflik Mesmude, make an Afkamina by the uh, by the uh, Tom itself. Medvar, more of a Sefer, Medvar, but more of a Tom, Ada Misham Piyatsma. Say, listen, when, if, when do I say if my animal killed your animal 
or kill the person I paid the full amount by a mui, but a tam ain't a misham I don't have to pay. Make that difference. He's just talking about the difference of mori. He wants to show you we're talking about a mui, and a mui pays if he killed a ben chorin or he killed a shore, he pays the full amount. If he killed a ben he doesn't pay the full amount. If you, you want to make a difference between mui and tam, if you would say a difference between mui and tam, like Rashi explains, you'd say, why not make a difference by shore? Why talk about a difference between uh, a mui and a tam? Talk about a difference in a mui itself. If a mui kills a ben chor and just one Allah be killed, then it's another Allah. So therefore, that's not an answer either. And therefore, it's not a proof. Because it could very well be, we're speaking about a mui, not talking about a tam. So there's no proof to this question again of, is chatsi nezik mamun or is it knas tashma? Zeakal, kol ha-misham yasra ha-mash yezik. The end of the mission said, if you pay more than your damage, more than you damage, like I pay double or uh, dollar the hay, or the end of the ev is only worth one shekel, I pay 30 shekels. Whenever I pay more than the actual damages, and Misham Pesach, you don't pay because that's that's a canal. So I don't pay if I admit it on my own. But we understand when you pay the principal, that shows that you're paying that it's mama. But if you pay more, then it's a canal. But why does he say, why do you say, the luscious call Misham Yesra? If I pay more than my damage, then I, then it's motive, then it's a canal, and I don't pay based on my own admission. If I pay less than the amount, so if I damage my shore, damage another shore, and I only have to pay chatzin ezek, you do pay you would pay indicating that chatzin ezek is mamo, not knas, because it says if I pay more than the damage, then I have to, then it's a knas, and I don't pay based on my own mission. But if it's less, so in the case of regular damage, I pay chatzin ezek. We know that a short time only pays chatzin ezek, smashma, that I would have to pay based on my own admission, indicating that chatzin ezek is mama, not constant more slow. Low time of pochus mashes. Don't say the deduction is only if I pay more, I don't, I'm not misham piyatsmo. But if I pay less, I would. If I pay the exact amount, if I pay the amount of my damages, then I'll, then I pay based on my own admission. If it's any other amount, more or less, then it's indication that it's a knas. And I don't pay. But if it's less, I don't pay. So it's not. So listening to Zach, I'll say this way. Why don't you Zach call? Why don't you just say it this way? You want to make a general rule? Say it this way. If you don't pay exactly what the damages are, then you then then you don't pay by based on your admission because then it's a knas. If if you pay the exact amount of the damages, then it's principal. If you pay any other amount, more or less, you don't pay. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You could, if he knows he's going to get caught, let him come forth and admit. You're right. That's the way around it. That's your general no question. But, but huh? There would be no crime. There would be no crime in the world. Right. right. You're right. You're right. right. Yeah. But now, if somebody, if a person was smart and would know the halacha, he'd come on his own. Yeah, he could do it. Or if he just innocently did tshuva, you know, whatever. But so, so why don't you say it that way? If you're saying that motiv that the chatzinazik is really a knas. So why don't you just say the mission say if you don't pay the exact amount of your damages, that's an indication that it's a knas, and you wouldn't be you wouldn't pay based on your admission because motor knas is potter. The mashma pach is a mashma yeser. Tiyufte tzaka kasha tzaka kasha. The mission should have said that, and since it doesn't say that, it seems to indicate that chatsi nezek is what is mamon is mamon and not knas because it's mashma that if you pay less than what the damages are, you would have to you would pay up the atzmo. In this case, chatzinezik is certainly less. It's only half. And mashma you would. It's mashma that that chatzinezik is moment, and you would pay it on your own. What about an evikhnani? That could be problematic. If the evikhnani is worth 100 and you're only paying 30, so you're paying less than you wouldn't be it. But there still is the halachosa halaginus kiknasa. Even though we just said it's a kasha from our mission, it seems to indicate that chatzinezik is mamon. The halach is a chatzinezik is a knas. So the marshes chuf the halachosa. First, you have a kasha indicating that. Chatzinezik is mamun. And now you're saying that Allah is Chatzinezik Nas. He says, Ain, time and might of I'll say it's not really such a strong kasha. Why? What was the reason why we slugged up? We said that the Mishnah should have said, if the Mishnah really meant to say that if you pay more or less, that's a knas. What, what, why? Bishum de lo ketani kamasha ezik. It didn't say if you damage exactly, if you don't pay exactly what you damage, that's a knas and you don't pay. Lo psikle, it's not definite. Why? Kivin dike Chatzinezik Troos. There's another Allah. Chatzinezik Troos is this. Rego, the animal walks on the street, we said, he's potter from, he's trampled on something. But let's say the animal's walking on the street and a, and a rock shot out from under his foot. It's, it's called throws, it, the, the, you know, pebbles shot out from under his foot in his normal way of walking. You don't pay the full amount. 
you don't pay the full amount. Al says he goes in, in the in the public street, he's part or any of it. Let's say in a private, a private in somebody's private yard where it's normal damage, he pays the full amount. If my animal trampled stuff in your yard, you have to pay the full amount. You have to pay the full amount. But if he went by ricochet or you know the uh, rock shot out from under his foot, that's halacha halacha mosh misina. You only pay half. Not because of not because he's a tom and a tom for that. Tom means tom is a told as a kind of a karen where the animal doesn't normally do it. So he pays chatzinesi. Here the animal normally doesn't. When he walks that way, it's normal for the rocks to shoot down. But it's halacha mosh misina. The only pays half. That's called chatzinesi tros. The elchus sekemir. It's halacha mosh misina. The mamonu. It's mamon. So here's an example where you pay less than the full amount and it's not kanas, it's mama. So that's why he's a lost When you pay more than the, the, uh, than the damages, that's certainly kanas and motor kanas is potter. When you pay less, there is a case when you pay less and it's still mama and you would pay based on your own admission. This case of chasin ezek tros. That's why you couldn't say it. Therefore, we, we say, so we say that the lachi is lachamai sedek, that motor knas, that everybody hears motor knas is part of But the question is, what's chatzi nezik? Chatzi nezik is knas, and therefore you wouldn't pay based on your own admission. So if my animal, which was not a movie, it only damaged once or twice, and I admit that he damaged your goat, I only have to pay half. I, I, I only have to pay half, but no, I don't pay anything. If I admit it on my own, I don't have to pay anything. The hashtag, the armor pal is going to get knas. And once we say now, that's the halacha, the pal, that half nezik is knas, high kalba, if you have a dog, that ate uh, a sheep, a lamb, right? <clears throat> Which is, is that normal for him to do? Not necessarily. Or or a cat that ate a large uh, rooster, let's say. Mashuna, that's not normal. It's abnormal. Therefore, what would you base? You wouldn't be able to collect in In other words, it's a kind of a Karen. And it's a question of um, admission. If you admit it, Chatzinezik would be Knas. And if you admit it on your own, it would be, you'd be, uh, you'd be uh, potter. But also the fact that it's a knas, here's the problem. Not, we're not talking about the mode of a knas now. The mode of a knas is not the issue. The issue is, is it knas or is it momo? If it's momo, you collect it wherever. Even if you have a bezdin in New York, you can collect it. If it's a knas, knas can only be done by Yashi and Olim, by a proper bezdin in Eretz Yisrael of musmachim. So therefore, if, if, if a dog, let's say, killed, uh, killed uh, lambs, which is not normal for him to do, he strangled them, or, uh, an, or the cat uh, ate a large, uh, large uh, rooster, killed him and ate him, that's not normal. Therefore, it's like it's a told of Karen. It's not Regal or Shane. And therefore, it's considered Karen. And if you're talking about doing it the first couple of times, it would be a Tom. And therefore, the connection would be based on Knast. But on being bubble and bubble, you couldn't collect on that in court. If he admitted on his own anyway, he wouldn't have to pay. But you wouldn't be able to collect in bubble because in bubble, they can't rule on knasso. Abel Zutri, but if it's a small animal, let's say the cat ate a, a small uh, rooster, a small uh, hen, whatever, then it's normal for him to do. And you'd collect. It would be normal. And then it would be what? Then it would be then it would be Shane. It would be like a told of Shane. And Shane is normal for him to do. And it's, it's money. It's, it's, regular care, it's regular money. It's regular principle. It's you're paying the principle. It's not a knas, and you would collect that. You could do a bubble. Etops, etops, but even in the case where it's a knas, where it's where it's a uh, where it's a to, where it's a tom and the told of Karen, if the if the if the plaintiff the uh, the person the nizik was damaged, if he grabbed the money from the other guy, Lamafkin, we wouldn't take it away. In other words, Besson can't paskin about it. But if he grabbed it, we can't take it away from either. Let's say he said. Let's go up to Eretz Yisrael. Okay, we, we can't collect it here. Let's go to Eretz Yisrael. Like, you know, we, like, you know, we, we, we appoint, a, a, we, we, we set him a time. We give him an appointment to, to come to the best in Eretz Yisrael. The law is if he refuses to go, we put him in chayim, we excommunicate him. Either way, if he doesn't get rid of his damaging animal, his nuisance, this, this wild dog or the wild cat, we put him in Mishamtin Lay, we put him in Khairim, Damrina, we tell him select select as a take away your damaging animal. But Rav Nasim, because of Rav Nasim's Allah at the time of Nasan Omer, Minayin Shall Yik Dal Adam Kal of Rabbi Tok Bay. So I didn't know you shouldn't have a wild dog in your house, you know, a Rottweiler or uh, whatever. Uh Veloyamid Sulam Ru, but Tokbase, you shouldn't have a a a a um a, a bad, uh, a weak ladder in your house, you know, a shaking ladder in your house. Don't put blood in your house. In other words, don't put yourself in a situation where your your animal or your uh, assets could harm people. Uh, so therefore, we put him in the harem if he doesn't get rid of it. Therefore, we, we tell him to put his dog to sleep. 
because uh, he, otherwise he's going to kill people. So we, we, so that's what we do. So, but again, the point over here is that if he does something which is abnormal, that's a told of Karen, and Karen meaning that the animal doesn't normally do damage that way. And if it's the first couple of times where the animal is a tom, uh, you would only be able to collect with a kanas, and that can only be with a court in Eretz Yisrael. And if he admitted on his own, again, chasinezek, uh, as a, a mode of Knesset Potter, and if Chatzinezik is a Knesset, as we've determined over here, he'd be Potter from paying at all for that. Hanulach El Naos, that completes the third paragraph. Here's the fourth paragraph. Naosh and Espatata. So we talked about, we talked about a girl that was that was uh, seduced, both to become a Knesset Shalavir. We already mentioned in the previous paragraph that who gets all that stuff? The fa- uh, the, in the case of Knesset, the father gets it all. Here, why? Because we learned out from Kim Kors, as Isha's Bitolama we had the other day. It's a hackish between Bitoram, just like an Oma, her all her um, all everything that she gains, so any profits that she has goes to her master. The same thing with the father. So we're saying over here also, now she's fata, boast to become a knasa, so the all goes to the father. But fusa. In the case of a rape, like the tfusa means she was grabbed, meaning she was raped. There's a as we learned in the previous parak, the addition of what's the difference between an hour uh, between a seduced girl and and a raped girl, besides the shame to the family that we talked about on Ahmed Aleph, in terms of payments, the difference is that. In the case of Anusa, there's Tsar involved too. Do you get paid that? That all goes to the father. Umda Bedin. So we've already learned really this halacha before, but here we go into more details. Umda Bedin, Ashlam myself. Let's say, okay, this case was adjudicated. You know, the family said you raped the girl, you seduced her, and they brought the courts and they came to, and, and then the father died. So once it was adjudicated, that means that the defendant over here, the rapist or the seducer, has to pay all these different things. So even if he didn't make the payment yet, according to the Tanakhama, the money effectively belongs to the father, Arain Shalav, and um, uh, Ashlav did, uh, Mesav, then the father died, Arain Shalav is the father's, Mesav, Arain Shalachim. In other words, if they came to court before the father died, it belongs to the father, even if it wasn't actually physically collected yet. They didn't go to what we call it, saw fall in Israel. Um, then if the father died, it belongs to her brothers, meaning the father's sons. It doesn't really mean her brother's they could be not her brothers. It could be, you know, that they are, uh, you know, they could be their half brothers, whatever. But, but, um, pardon? It's the father's yeah. sons, right? They're the father, the heirs, right? They go to the heirs of the father. Lois Let's say the father died before they was adjudicated. Before it was adjudicated, the family knew that the guy raped, and if the father didn't die, Arain Shalatzman, she keeps this. We learned before, if the father died, she keeps the money. Okay, um, the Bedinat Shalobagra. Let's say again, the case was adjudicated before she became a Bogar, before she was 12 and a half. Again, a range of Mesa Av, a range of the same thing. Lois Bigelam Bedinat Shalobagra. Let's say she didn't come to court before we said she didn't come to court before the father died. Father could still be alive here, but, but she became a Bogaris, then a range The father only gets the money if, if it was adjudicated while she was still in Nara. But if she was already a Bogaris 12 and a half, then she keeps the money. And, the, and then, the, and then the, the brothers, even if the father died, now the, the kids would get nothing. Shimon Omer. Shimon says even more. Shimon says that it doesn't go by the adjudication, by the verdict, but it goes by the time that was money was paid. Shimon says if if the didn't collect the money from the rapist, before the father died, even if the case was adjudicated already, she keeps the money, right? Before the Tanakama said, if the case was adjudicated already and the verdict was rendered that the rapist owes money, and then the father died, this money still goes to his estate. Rabbi Shimon says it goes based on payment. My see them, let's say her paycheck, her paycheck, right? Any money that she gets, her paycheck, and anything that she finds, we'll talk about she finds, Afbishla even though it wasn't collected yet, or like her paycheck, may and shalachin, because that's considered collected already. You know, that's mama. What do we say? We mentioned Rashi mentioned this before, he mentions here too, that the, the only thing that you give to, the only thing you inherit to somebody else is money. You can't inherit a knas or a schus to a schus for, for somebody uh, to uh, a schus to co- to collect. But so so if, let's say the father died before it was adjudicated, but the father was entitled to the money, so he can't inherit that um, that schus that merit that he has to collect the daughter's money. He can't inherit that to his kids. He can inherit money over here, though. Let's say she was owed a paycheck. Mm-hmm. She worked or she found something. Make it lower. Like, trying. Of so, even though it wasn't collected, it still belongs to the brothers because that means that it was considered money already. If it's money was owed already, it's like the case was adjudicated. Why and then we go, we go into the estate. So I don't have right? any of 